And Thomas Bywater, country head of ICO in Australia and New Zealand. Um, welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Charles. Good to be with you. It seems remarkable that after all these years, all these decades, in fact, um, of solar PV, we're still achieving remarkable gains in efficiencies and innovation. And IECO this week has several important announcements to make about the efficiency of its panels and, 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 and some of its deals. Let's start with the major one, I suppose. Well, what's bringing around this innovation? I mean, it's, it seems... Yeah, the, the, the major one, of course, is the uh, announcement on that 500-watt panel. Uh, so we've made our first 500-watt panel in that 54-cell space, that two-square-metre space. So that's really exciting to, to have actually practically done that on a, on a mass production line. And just to make this clear, this is the world's first 500-watt panel in less than two square metres. So, um, you know, it just seems just a few years ago that we were getting excited about 400 watt panels and now we're at 500 watt panels. Yeah, it's exactly right. And I think even people within our business have been surprised at the rate of progress. And there's been a number of reasons for that, like strategy, how we're actually making the panel has changed. Mm. Uh, but also some of those films and laser technologies that have come to market, they've just been quicker than expected. And we've just seen that rapid rate of growth uh, in what's possible. And so what's enabled this then specifically? You, you, I think you've um, reached a level of 25% efficiency. Um, tell us more about that and how those gains have been made. Yes, the beautiful thing about back contact is it um, has a wider yield than the older technologies. So that means that if you have a, let's say, a mass production at 490, you will naturally get some 495, 500. And that's, that's really where that sort of transpires. So it's a small amount at the moment, but building into next year, it will become a mass market offering. And the thing about back contact technology, I mean, maybe you can explain exactly what back contact is for the people, the, the lay people out there. But my understanding is that back contact, back contact was really reserved for sort of premium panels, but you're actually bringing it to a mass market now. And you've also, we'll probably get to this in a minute, um, announced some, a significant um, supply deal, one gigawatt of supply deal, which sort of brings this into the mass market. And yeah, so the thing about back contact to understand it at its core is all solar panels up until the early probably 80s had metal on the front and the rear side of the cells. Now, the terrible thing about metal is that light doesn't go through it. And obviously solar panels, we're trying to collect light. So the more metal you put on the front of a solar cell, it means light can't get inside. Um, so what we've done is we've taken that metal onto the rear side. Now that idea is not new. It's been around for 30, 40 years as a concept. Uh, but what we've done is we've made that process into two simple steps instead of one complicated step. And that's brought that cost down and also allowed us to use different methods to make the product so it can be higher efficiency as well as getting lower cost. Yeah. Um, so that, that's really in a nutshell what we've done is taken things that block light off the front of the panel because these are just sun collectors, right? That's what solar cells are. And with the metal on the back, we get more sun in the front side. So that's one thing. How do we then go from the 475 to your 490s, your 500s? Uh, well, what we've done there is we've actually taken other parts of metal on the front of the panel, put that onto the back. So first we started with the cells, metal onto the back. Then we looked at the panel and gone, oh, there's still metal on the front of these panels. We don't need to do that with back contact. Let's move it all to the rear. So you get more space on that solar panel that's making energy. And there's been some other innovations too, I guess, at the back end about the interconnectors. Um, we've, uh, the, the solar panels have long relied on silver. You guys are using more copper now, which obviously, well, I think brings down the cost, doesn't it? Yeah, so again, that's not a new idea per se. Others have tried it, uh, but we've perfected that using the automation that's available to us in our home base areas in, in China, where all that robotics is coming from. Uh, so that's really helped us to do that in a way that's reliable and low cost. And what the copper does for you is it, it does trim the, off that silver cost, but it also strengthens the cell. Um, so we were able to deliver the panels that perform best in hail uh, on the market for that, for that money. Uh, so it's, it's got the hidden benefit, I guess you might say, that you, you can't necessarily see when you look at the panel, uh, but it's there and it's giving our customers peace of mind. Yeah, and a lot of these things seem to be coming from manufacturing efficiencies and manufacturing gains. Um, automation, um, it just, it continues. It, it is amazing and uh, back in the day we would have thought this is just not possible because it's so complex to do but uh, now with the level of automation our factory now uh, probably has less uh, people employed across gigawatt scale than you would have had in a hundred megawatt scale five years ago so it it doesn't necessarily mean high cost just because you have a new technology on on the market yeah. 
So having a 500 watt panel available to consumers, what does that mean? Because it, I presume it just means that you can actually fit more solar on smaller pace, smaller, smaller rooftops and, and smaller available spaces. And that's actually quite important now because I guess like many big wind and solar projects, all the best, all the best locations have gone and it's probably the same for many rooftops as well. So getting more from less is actually quite important. Yeah, particularly in the residential space, if you uh, look at the trend to put batteries in now. So before, a roof was generally enough for a household's daytime uh, needs. We weren't trying to cover two days later when it might rain. We weren't trying to cover overnight. We weren't trying to charge EVs. But when you bring in the more swimming pool penetration now in Australia, you bring in the EVs into the mix, you bring in the aircon penetration has increased as well as well as the heater use in uh, even in places like Brisbane and Sydney in the winter. Uh, now you need more energy than we need, say, a decade ago. Uh, so what that means is we need to collect more sun. Yeah. Uh, and the roof has started to become actually a limit on what you can do. So if you choose, let's say, ICO instead of an older technology, uh, what that's going to do for you is cover more of your usage. Or it might be that it charges your battery up quicker in the morning uh, back to full. Uh, when you want to use it for something or there's an opportunity on the market to sell power because people are selling power with things like amber now right so uh, a lot of opportunities are open to you if you can charge that battery up yeah i mean it's extraordinary to think that if you go back a few years the average size of the solar panel rooftop solar array was about three kilowatts now it's nine kilowatts ten kilowatts and i think it's getting bigger and people putting in big batteries so um the more that you can put in a small space then the better yeah, so we, we think probably by next year, a typical house will be putting on somewhere between 30 and 40 panels, um, which is going to be obviously 60 square metres. Uh, if you have the ability to put another 10% more power in that space, well, then perhaps you don't need as many square metres. You can stay away from the TV aerial uh, or perhaps you can have room for a skylight. There's all sorts of lifestyle benefits that come from having a more compact solar panel. Yeah. And what's the benefit then for installers or what does it mean for installers in, in, in terms of efficiencies and, and costs, etc.? Well, it, times are tough in a sense in the business world in Australia and uh, what it gives you is the ability to have more turnover with the same amount of racks, let's say, or the same amount of hours on site, the same amount of employees and so on. You can just add turnover to the business and it's a win-win, right? Because you're not just charging customers something they don't need or want. They need it, they want it, it helps them. And it also lets the business have a slightly higher turnover per project. Um, so that's one of those beautiful things that everyone wins, right? Um, and uh, the other thing is that it pushes forward other projects. So every day that someone chooses an ICO 490, let's say, instead of a 440, the guys making the 440 find out we need to make at least a 450, right? So mm -hmm. if we look at the last six months, what has ICO done in Australia, in our opinion, is we've lifted the output of the average panels on the market in a way that wouldn't have happened if we didn't come. That's interesting. Yeah. You've also announced this gigawatt um, supply deal. Um, tell us more about that and the importance of that. Yeah, so our, our partners are working with us to deliver a portfolio of the Infinite Pro products over the next uh, three years. Um, so what that means is that uh, our partners are committed to bring the best in class technology here to Australia. So historically what's happened is Europe has taken the good panels, Japan's taken the good panels, even New Zealand has higher output um, potentially than, than Australian market. Uh, so what we're trying to do is engage with our partners to offer several different panels that fit different needs. Uh, so you mentioned that um, Infinite uh, Pro, which is your 495, your 500 watt panels. Uh, we have also brought out a slightly larger panel, 1.9 metre panel, uh, which uh, in the second generation is at a 520. Mm -hmm. In the next generation will be at 540. Mm. Uh, so those sort of panels have been around 500 watts in our market. They're going to go to 540. So we're going to offer the farmers a choice, like some bigger systems in the rural areas will be able to access suitable panels, uh, as well as those residential um, customers, as well as having full black so the aesthetics is improved. Mm. A lot of times people don't put solar on because they don't like the look. And we'd encourage you to take a look at the panels that are on offer now and how they, they do look just that little bit more respectful to the environment, I would say, uh, so that they can be, for example, retrofitted to heritage buildings with that beautiful matte look. Uh, they can fit in with the valley there. They don't sort of take away from the beautiful surroundings that some of our rural customers enjoy. Surprising how often uh, people care about what, uh, what's on their roof, rooftops, but... Um, it's, well, it's... We, we sometimes, um, I'm, I'm an engineer and electrician, sometimes I get bogged down in the electrons and the cables and all this kind of thing. 
but I was educated yesterday here in Melbourne by an installer. He said, I'm doing a 500 kilowatt project with full black panels. And I was why are you doing that? And so, well, it's on a beautiful farm. Like it needs to play with the vineyard. It, it can't just be jarring when someone comes around the corner there. And uh, I thought that was really encouraging that mm. we're able to take those projects forward just from that aesthetic point of view. Where are we heading? People often sort of wonder about when a good time is to install solar. And, and I guess one part of that equation is sort of prices and, and things like that. And we've seen prices come down on solar technology over the last couple of years. But I think there's a, a couple of potential roadblocks ahead. It might not continue to fall down because there's various things happening in global markets. So give us a bit of an overview of what, you, what you're seeing out there and what, 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 what factors may play. Yeah, it's always hard without the crystal ball to figure out yeah. what's coming around the corner. But I think we can all agree the price can't go to zero. It, it will reach some kind of a point that's not zero. Um, and uh, that implies that there's a plateauing of the curve. So I think the first thing we'll see is the price, particularly for large projects, will plateau. Uh, now, in the home countries of some of these uh, solar businesses, uh, the governments are looking at the fact that some of the material producers are losing money. Um, so even though we potentially as a panel manufacturer, we, we might make money, the supplier of the silver paste or the supplier of the silicon uh, could be losing money. Um, so what we expect is some steps from various governments to cause that to go back to equilibrium. Uh, it's a long way of saying the price will go up for the materials. Um, we've also seen consolidation in the glass supply. So there's basically two companies now that supply about 70% of the glass. Uh, they have not been making great margins. They're looking to increase that. So we think the glass will continue to increase in price. Uh, there's also talk of a floor price in China, um, mm. meaning that the price of panels that are exported will not be below a certain level per watt. The expectation is that that will be a higher figure mm. than the current project pricing that we see. Yeah. Um, so you've got those material suppliers looking to capture profitability. You've got the glass there. The freight has been pretty affordable as well. We expect that to probably trend upwards a little bit. Uh, the other thing is the VAT that the manufacturers get when they, um, when they export panels in China, they get a refund of that. Just like when you send barley out of Australia, you get GST back. Yeah. If you export uh, medicines from Australia, you'll get your GST back as an exporter. China was doing the same thing. Uh, there's a strong indication that will stop at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So that could push the price up about 10% for all panels. What about sort of future gains in sort of efficiencies and technologies? I mean, I, I guess we, um, we thought we reached sort of, you know, um, achievable limits in the past couple of years, but we're doing better and better. I mean, what, what can we expect in the future? Well, all the gains come from research. Uh, and at ICO, we've actually got partnerships with the universities in Canberra, Sydney, and now here in Melbourne. So we're actually today announcing uh, a partnership with uh, a great institution here in Melbourne. And uh, we'll see more news about that later on. Uh, but um, apart from that, we're also exposed to the research in Germany and in China and Japan. And from that, the next sort of stage will be some kind of tandem back contact in our view. Um, and that has the ability to lift that 500 watt panel up another 10 to 20 watts. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, obviously, that's not for free. Uh, so we need to get some return on investment on the technology we've already got. Uh, but we can see that within a couple of years, you'll see further advances on that 500 watts. And the popularity of rooftop solar has been running at about 2 gigawatts to 3 gigawatts over the last couple of years. There seems to be no sign of that slowing down. Um, it's not just new homes, it's also repowering or replacing or adding to existing arrays. Um, it seems that um, there's a lot of strength in the industry. Yeah, there definitely is. We've been um, pleasantly surprised by the stability of our rooftop industry in Australia. Uh, so there was some concern that there would be saturation. Mm. We haven't seen that. Mm. Um, in fact, if we want to look out the next five years and just look at the commercial opportunities uh, on businesses, they're phenomenal opportunities. So why have a lot of businesses not done solar? There's three reasons. First one, don't understand it too busy. Mm. That sort of not on the radar effect, if you like. But the second reason has been the leases might be five years, seven years. The payback might have been five years. It was too close to be sure that you'd get your money back. Now the return is shorter. Final one, if you've got a McDonald's or you've got a petrol station, you've got a lot of lighting in that business. You've got refrigeration overnight. You haven't had the batteries there. They're coming in. 
Um, so with that, we think the industry has got a lot of legs in it um, out across the next half decade to just fill in all those commercial sites, plus do the repaneling that you mentioned. So like yourself, Giles, like my, my panels uh, from before, 390s, 400 watts. Now you can do maybe 500 and, and above. Uh, possibly you will see some people upgrading their systems, adding to their systems. Uh, so the industry itself is really healthy and uh, we're really excited about what's possible here in Australia. And we're actually leading the way for people in the region. So if you go to New Zealand, if you go to Papua New Guinea, if you go to Fiji, they're looking to what Australia is doing and they're copying that. So it's cross-pollinating, right? Um, and I think we'll see a lot of that around the world in the so-called fringe of developed countries. So. In Europe and in Japan, there's already lots of penetration, but places like America, lots of roofs to fill with solar. Even in China, even in Thailand, there's lots of growth opportunities for the industry. And so Thomas, just you know, apart from that leadership, that technology leadership in, in Australia and the surrounding regions, you know, how else does IK like to see itself sort of um, just represented in the community? Yeah, I think there's a, a few things we need to do in the industry. Uh, we've got to keep sort of fun. Mm. We've got to pe keep our people engaged so we don't lose our people to other industries. Uh, but we've also got to give back. Um, so that could be by pushing for recycling in the industry. Um, also, we've got the ICO Foundation. So we've done a number of exciting things in the last 12 months, like we've uh, supported projects in, in Queensland and down in Tasmania, the Raptor Refuge. So we're really proud of those kind of things to be able to just do something beyond the nuts and bolts of solar and, and give something back and, and keep our community thriving. Okay. Well, congratulations for that and congratulations on your announcement um, this week. Thank um, you. And um, thanks for joining the program. Cheers. All the best, Charles.